Here are a few ways you can frame a corner window. We have two headers here, two sills, and they are intersecting into a king stud. And this would this method here would be used if you needed a little more room on the outside or the inside. Here we have a king stud and then a full length trimmer full length trimmer over here and then a king stud. It's the window sill, sub sill, and the cripples or jack studs, cripples or jack studs and headers. Here we can see how the bottom is laid out. Again, two studs away. This right here is used. Most common uh, method for using a reason for using this type of construction method would be if you had window trim. So for example, if you were going to use wood windows and then put a two inch um, piece of trim around the window, kind of give it a picture frame look, then you would need to use something like this. You can't take and stick the windows all the way in the corner. You're going to need some room and this this method right here would be great for that and you might even need to move it an inch and a half further depending upon the thickness of the window trim in this method here we are using a four by four in the corner and a full length trimmer on each side this would keep us an inch and a half away from the corner And again, this method could be used if you were going to use a certain type of wood trim, a little smaller wood trim. What would work fine for windows that um, something like a vinyl window or aluminum window. I say aluminum windows. I don't even know if they make them anymore. This is 2016. And who knows? I don't know if I when the last time was I seen an aluminum window. This would be a window with a flange and maybe a one inch to a two inch, even a three inch, depending upon the thickness of the window and the thickness of your wall framing. It would be something that would stop in the um, stop um, and that would not need to be trimmed out with wood. Here's a four by four in the corner and this is a probably the most common method used for framing corner windows. You would have no trimmer in the corner um, to support the headers because the headers would be sitting on top of the four by four. They are mitered with a 45 degree angle. Show you a little bit more of that here in a few minutes. 4x4 four four supporting the window header, a 2x4 full length trimmer supporting the header on this side. Here's how the bottom section would be framed so that you have plenty of backing for drywall. Upper corner or upper inside corner again sitting on the four by four everything dies into the corner here you would have a nice line coming out here and then of course you would drywall this or trim it out with wood however you were going to finish it another view here just to show you where it's supporting the four by four the the four by four post is supporting the headers last but not least take a look at what the mitered header mitered header would look like. You would have a header, a 4x6, 4x8 window header, and you would miter the corner with a with a 45 degree angle depending upon what uh, corner you're using. A standard window, I mean a standard corner of a home is 90 degrees. If this was going to be a different, you could use this same method for another corner type of window, but you would just need to change the angle of the header you were going to use if the wall was not intersecting at a 90 degree angle. Hope that makes sense. Here's the last example I could come up with. If you have another example or another idea, feel free to email them to me and I will see if I can attach a link to them at the end of the video or make another video. Now this one actually uses hangers. These are inverted hangers that will attach to the 4x4. Now something else I'd like to point out here is in this example we are using a floating trimmer. 
where the trimmer stops at the subsill and doesn't go all the way to the ground. I just wanted to give you an idea of the different trimmers that you could use. So here you can see right here, we have the trimmer sitting on top of the subsill, and here it is going all the way down to the ground. Two hangers in the corner. I just kind of wanted to pan back here and give you another idea with the trimmers, how they are supporting the header. Header supported by a full length trimmer, a header that is supported by a floating trimmer. What's the difference? A lot of uh, people I worked with like to use the floating trimmer so that they could move the bottom just in case they had to. And uh, that's a good that's good enough reason for me right there. I like this method here. If you are building homes nice and plumb, and they're plumb and level, you're not going to have uh, everything's nice and square. This method right here would provide you a little more support. Um, but as you can also see, it's uh, going to require another um, cripple, let's say. You know, here you can see that we only have two. Over here we have three. So it's going to be require a little more wood to do it this way also. Take a look at the hangers. Hangers attached to the post. Nail in there. And this is, is an inverted hanger. You can usually find it as a Simpson HU. Uh, again, that's an inverted hanger. The flanges are not on the outside. They are on the inside. Now here's one of the reasons why I don't like using this method. And I have seen, you know, sometimes I've had to deal with it. Structural engineers put it in there, but uh, the hangers usually create problems for the drywaller and um, whoever's going to be putting the uh, exterior finish on because they're usually a little bit bigger. And here you can see it's kind of sticking out here. You know, um, let's just say it's an eighth of an inch. I mean, a sixteenth of an inch, that's fine. It's, that probably wouldn't be too bad, but it's going to create a little bump in the drywall. And uh, this uh, usually isn't uh, a good thing all the time. So let's just see if I can kind of go out here. Another problem it's going to have is for nailing the drywall in these corners. So you can imagine when you put the when you put the drywall here, this will be the furthest you're going to be able to put a screw or a nail. And the same thing here. And I'm just going to see if I can pan around to the outside. This wouldn't be as big of a problem on the outside because you're going to be nailing over here. So, but again, the reason why I don't like using these is because they usually create a bump or a dip. And if you don't nail the hanger on correctly, then um, you could actually have problems. Um, you know, it could be sticking out even further. And and of course, I've nailed these things on before where I couldn't get the um, beam in or the header in because I had nailed them too close together. So not a big fan of this method. I would go with the method before this one where you have the mitered, where you use the mitered headers.